Yo guys, what's up? So recently a heap of my buddies have started getting back into Destiny a little bit and after re-explaining how armor stats work and how you can get high stat armor now due to the seasonal changes, I thought I'd make a quick video that describes it all a little easier than I feel most YouTubers do and of course I'll be showing you the new and best ways you can get yourselves a few sets of super high stat armor and I'll be telling you guys why that is so important. Now timestamps will be in the description, cue the intro. Now real quick before we get into the vid, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I wanted to quickly let you guys know that I've started streaming on Twitch at twitch.tv slash itsiticus. I play Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the moment, Australian time, so keep in mind that might be Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday if you're American or anywhere else in the world. Uh, all this support is greatly appreciated. Now let's get into it. So for the newbies out there. Armor stats are the bonuses you get from each armor piece for the six stats in the game. Each stat gets added together and it basically gives you a tier for that stat which determines how effective it is. Now the six stats in the game are mobility which determines your movement speed and initial jump height, not your sprint speed, your movement speed. So you know when you strafe while you're aiming, that's what mobility changes. Second stat is Resilience, which is simply just your Guardian's health, not much more to it. Third is Recovery, which determines how quickly your Guardian begins the health regeneration process after being hurt, and how quickly the health bar itself refills once the generation has begun. I am literally reading this straight from the wiki, so if I sound like I'm reading something, that's why. Uh, now the next three stats all decrease cooldown of your three main abilities. Discipline affects your grenade cooldown, intellect, your super, and strength affects your melee cooldown. I also want to point out that each class ability is affected by a separate stat as well. So mobility is for the hunter dodge, resilience for the titan barricade, and recovery affects the warlock's rift cooldown. Now when you hover over your stat on the character menu, it'll bring up a bar and that will show you the tier you are for that stat. Each tier is a multiple of 10 and only changes or only takes effect in multiples of 10. So that means 12 mobility and 18 mobility are both still tier one because they haven't hit 20 yet. So they're no different from each other, even though one seems higher. These numbers you see are made up from the numbers on the armor and that is how you pick and choose which stats you want to prioritize. Each armor piece has their own mod slots, the first being one that allows a stat mod to be slotted in which gives a plus 10 boost to that stat per mod. So aside from your armor's base stats, you can have an extra plus 50 for whatever stats you like, plus 10 for each of your 5 armor pieces. What stats you decide to go for is completely up to you. If you want a popular opinion though, the best stat to have at 100 first would definitely be recovery. It just makes you stronger in both PvE and PvP, and it's a massive quality of life improvement. Thank me later. Now before I get onto how you can get the juicy high stat armor, I want to stress the importance of master working armor. Master working your armor is when you level it up fully, which allows it to have 10 mod slots and also gives it a plus two in each stat for that armor piece. This means if you have a helmet with a 60 total stat, and I put a mobility mod onto it, which gives it plus 10, and then I also masterwork that helmet for a plus 12, its total stats would have gone from 60 to 82 total stats. Masterworking armor requires ascendant prisms and shards and is insanely expensive, which is why I recommend you only ever upgrade armor with over 60 base stats. And if you're not new to the game and you play it fairly regularly, I'd say hold off upgrading until you get gear with 63 total stats or higher. If any of that confused you or you have any questions about it, pop a comment down below and I'll try and answer every single one straight away. Now onto the tips. Before this season came out, the only ways you could increase your chances of getting high stat armor was doing iron banner bounties, cashing in iron banner tokens, or if you got lucky enough with a garden of salvation raid chest. These methods were still insanely unlucky, and after the entire community complained endlessly for something to change, Bungie made it too easy to get 60 plus stat gear, like I'm dismantling 61 and 62 stat gear on the daily. 
Now technically there's no guarantee that any loot you get will be super high stats, although at the moment it is extremely likely. But if you want a way to guarantee yourself a full set of 60 plus armor, every season pass comes with an entire set per character with insanely high stats. This season pass comes with three sets of armor and the third is the one with the high stats. So if you have the pass, please make sure you do not dismantle this armor set. Now for those who don't want to get the season pass or you already have it and are looking for some more high stat armor, the new season was changed so that all powerful gear drops and prime engrams have a much higher chance of dropping high stat rolls. That means every week you can get powerful rewards from playing a couple strikes, a couple games of gambit, a couple games of crucible, prime engrams that you find around, ranking up your Valor in Crucible, and all of the raids. And you can repeat all of these activities on all three characters. And now that every activity basically drops pinnacle gear instead of powerful, you have even more reason to go and get all the weeklies done every single week. So there you go, in short, every powerful or pinnacle drop is now almost guaranteed to give you something half decent at worst, and if you're stuck on what to prioritize, resilience for all characters, mobility for all characters, except maybe warlock, as low mobility can actually make your warlock skating faster. If you don't really care about that, then high mobility is still good. Resilience is kind of worse than the other two and only makes a real difference if you play on Titan and go for insanely high resilience. The other three, that's up to you. Now, I hope I covered most of the basics, if not all. If it was helpful in any way, please leave a comment or a like. It helps a lot to know what I'm doing right or wrong. Subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. There will be more to come very soon. Have an awesome day and I'll hopefully catch you again. Peace. Thank you.